this problem since this is a big review problem um, for on there. So as I mentioned, guys, when you're doing sine of x divided by 2, um, our main important thing is we need to find the values on that unit circle when we have square root of negative 3 divided by 2. So to do that, I need to go back and revisit the unit circle. And we have to know that unit circle, that first quadrant, when we go ahead and take that exam EOC. So the first thing I notice, um, Ahmad, I don't think that's going to be a good seat for you. Um, so when I go ahead and rewrite the unit circle, knowing the points that I know for the first quadrant, okay, that's what I have for those my first three angles, where this angle is pi over 6, pi over 4, and pi over 3. Does everybody follow me with this? Okay. Now we're asking, again, forget about the x divided by 2. We're not concerned about that until the very, very end. So when we're looking at this, we need to figure out when is sine of x divided by 2 equal to negative 3 halves, or negative th um, square root of 3 divided by 2. Now remember, the sine represents the y coordinate. So I look at this, and I notice that nowhere in my first quadrant is y negative, correct? The only time that y is going to be negative is in the fourth and the third quadrant. So therefore, I need to figure out this angle when it's this point, when it's down here, and over here. I need to figure out what those two angles are. So to do that, I know that this is pi over 3. So over here would be 2 pi over 3. Over here would be 3 pi over 3. Over here is 4 pi over 3. Here would be 5 pi over 3. And here would be 6 pi over 3, right? Because is 6 pi over 3 the same thing as 2 pi? Yeah, so I did it correctly, right? So my answers now are x divided by 2 equals 4 pi over 3. And x divided by 2 equals 5 pi over 3. Now, there is a very important distinction that they asked. They said find all of the solutions, right? If they just said find the solutions between 0 and 2 pi, we can work off these two solutions. But it said find all of the solutions. That means my angle can keep, I need to determine all the coterminal angles. So let's kind of, let's look at our two angles. I have this angle and that angle. Let's kind of erase the rest of this stuff. So I have two angles. I have from here all the way to here and from here all the way to there. Those are my two solutions, right? So remember, to go from here, if I want, if so if I go from here to here, that's the number one solution. If I want to find another solution, I have to go a distance of, so if I go to here, I have to go all the way back around to find the next answer, right? So I have to add 2 pi. And how many times can I add 2 pi to keep on getting this solution? Many Infinite many times. So therefore, I'm going to say plus. 2 pi k. You can use any variable you want to. In this case, I'm going to use k. I know we've used n before. We've used l. We've used p. Doesn't really matter. And exact same thing. To go here to this answer, to find the next solution, I have to go around again. So I'm going to add 2 pi k. Now you might say, well, how does, that, how does it work? What happened when we only added pi or pi halves? Well, if we notice, if I have my, this answer, you know the next answer is only pi over 3 away, right? So you could just say, why don't, why don't you just add pi over 3? Well, it works for this answer to this answer. But if you add pi over 3 again, you're going to get the next answer right here, which is not a solution to your equation. So you have to make sure, if you guys um, if you remember, like let's say we had here was an angle and here was an angle. So if I said that was a solution, to get to the next solution, I could just add pi. And then I could add pi again and add pi again. So that was, when you have like opposite angles, Mackenzie, that was when we'd only add pi instead of 2 pi. But in this case, we're going to have to add 2 pi. And we're going to add that infinite many times, which is represented by my variable k. So now to finish my answer, the first thing, treat it just like a regular equation. You solve for your variable. x, but it's and not x, it's x divided by 2. You add, you add in your 2 pi k, and now we solve for x. So to solve for x, I multiply by 2 on both sides. And therefore, my final answer is x equals 8 pi over 3 plus 4 pi k 
and x equals 10 pi over 3 plus 4 pi k. Anybody have any questions on that? OK. Please go ahead and give yourself an M, A, T, or H, depending on how you did, how you feel about it.